Good evening and welcome to a very special Sunday edition of the Cat's Whiskers podcast. My name is John A. Bullard. You may be wondering why we're recording on a Sunday and we're not live. Well, we've got an awful lot to get through. We won't, we will certainly uh, surpass our normal 45 minute live limit. So we're recording this one and obviously there's a lot of reaction after what has happened over the weekend. To discuss the goings on at Nottingham Panthers along with myself are Paul Baum. Hello. Tina Taylor. Hello. And Andy Haywood. Hello. So we're going to start by looking back at the games over the weekend and we're going to start on a bit of a positive. Friday night, Panthers taking on the Coventry Blaze in a Challenge Cup group game, the final one for the Panthers. Blaze having to win in order to qualify for the quarterfinals. They didn't manage that. Panthers with a 2-1 victory which brought to a halt a five-game losing streak. In the first period, Jeff Brown got Panthers on the board on the power play before Alex Nikiforuk made it 2-0 in the second period. Brett Robinson scoring Blazers' only goal just five seconds before the end of the game. Uh, Paul, Tina and myself were there. So, Paul, in the end, it was a good win. It it was a win. Um, It wasn't a classic. I don't think I ever really expected it to be, to be honest, but... The thing that, that stood out for me across the, the whole game was that if you'd watched those two performances you know, from the two sides, you wouldn't have thought it was the Blaze that needed to win to go through and that for us it was essentially a dead rubber. You'd have thought it was the other way around. Yeah, actually, I, I totally agree with that. Panthers seem to have more jump, especially in the first and second periods. Do you think that's fair, Tina? Mm, yeah, definitely. Um the, the way that the Panthers started out, the way um, that you know the hits were coming in, the, there was a lot of effort going into the skating. It it, it just seemed like it, the game was actually more important to the Panthers. It was it, it was it was good to see, you know, based on the results that we we've, we've had over the last couple of weeks, um, and you know, you, it, essentially, yeah, a dead rubber game for us, but we still we still needed to see a performance like that. We, we, we needed to know that the Panthers at least had it in them to, to bring out a performance like that, I would say. A mm-hmm. okay. uh, cu- couple of uh, incidents from out throughout the game. An absolutely stonking fight between Klotz and McGrath and Paul. I mean, a, a real proper stand-up punchers thrown between two big guys. It was. Um, you know, it's one of the you know the best fights I've seen in a while, I guess. And... Um... But in, you you wouldn't really expect anything anything less from them. Um, I'm not quite sure what this putting your helmet on the ice and spinning it after you've 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 fought somebody is all about because um, Nicky Forrock did it as well. But um, yeah, so it's also the first time I can remember that I've seen the the linesmen have to wipe the blood off the uh, the plexiglass as well. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was quite a sight to be fair. Uh, and Tina, Alex Nicky Forrock stepping up after Kevin Noble uh, and. Ollie Betteridge were dropping the gloves, but uh, Nicky Forrock came in and uh, I think it's fair to say gave Kevin Noble a bit of a beating. Yeah, it was a well-deserved beating as well because I'm sick and tired of seeing him whinging all the time. Um, just, yeah, it, it's it, it, Kevin Noble's one of those players. If, if he's not playing for you, you hate him. There are there are nine teams, I can confidently say, in the Elite League that, that wanted to see Kevin Noble get his comeuppance. Um, the, the only thing I would say is that I that I think the, the third man in at penalty that he got was a little bit questionable because Betteridge didn't want anything to do with that. And I don't think, uh, from as I, as I remember it, Betteridge never dropped a glove, he didn't throw a punch, he just tried to get, he just tried to turn away from Noble and Noble was just determined that, you know, that he was going to have a fight. And he got a fight, just not, not he, who he was trying to fight with. Uh, but yeah, Nicky Farouk just sort of blitzed in from nowhere and made himself an instant folk hero for the night for the Panthers. Um, I didn't yeah, think it was the third man in penalty because that implies Kevin Noble's a man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, well, well, we've just warming up. Diff- just warming up. <laughs> we've each got a different view, but yeah, I think I think at, at the time, yeah, everybody sort of around me, we, yeah, we we're all a little bit questionable because I, I mean, I did I did sort of think that oh, you know, yeah, the the ref is probably going to call that as third man in, and yeah, I was I was right, unfortunately. Um, 
But I think I think that was a little bit harsh, given that Betteridge never actually got involved in the altercation in the first place. But you know, anyway, it happened, and it was of it was of no detriment to the result in the end, and because uh, it was a, a game, not a match, he didn't get a further ban from it. So I mean, it's it's uh, it, it's not hurt anything particularly, um, and it was blooming good fun to watch. <laughs> And there ends the positivity because it, it goes downhill. Did it, <laughs> it goes downhill from here. Um, we do want to say before we begin, or well, before we get on to the Steelers game, we asked for STCW questions as part of this uh, recording of the podcast. We had so many. Uh, thank you very much to anyone who took the time to send us a question, whether it be on Twitter through the cage or via Facebook. We had so many that we can't possibly go through them all or it's going to be an incredibly long podcast. So we've had to sort of group them together and, and see which ones are the same. But but before we begin, thank you very, very much for taking the time. Um, and there's a lot of strong feelings out there. It, it's 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 very easy to say because uh, a lot of very pertinent and very uh, pointed questions, especially regarding the Panthers organisation. So Saturday night, Panthers travelled to the House of Steel to take on the Sheffield Steelers and came away with an 8-1 defeat. The rot started in the first, Robert Dowd, Colton Fretter and Matthew Waugh scoring within just two minutes of the first period between 11.33 and 13.35. Didn't get any better in the second as Fretter and Waugh got their second and Ben O'Connor made it 6-0 into the third and there was no mercy as Jesse Schultz and Marcus Nilsson made it 8-0 before Brad Moran broke Mustikoff's shutout at 59.59 to... uh, Something to take from the game, however little and however irrelevant it was in the end. Um, So, guys, the question that uh, we need to ask after that is, what the bleep? Andy, you go first. Andy's intelligence you've got. (laughs) Andy, you go first, because you've not spoken yet. Well, you'd like to think that... A blowout scoreline like that is a bit of a one-off and a bit of a blip. But, you know, with the form that the team are in, you, you sort of wouldn't really be surprised if it wasn't, which is the which is the main worry. I mean, you look at last season when we won 8-0 up in Sheffield, you know, it was it was great for us and it was, it was awful for them. Um, and obviously it was the only real sort of major blowout game uh, of, of the year. Um I would, like I say, I would like to think that that would be the only time we'll concede eight this season. Um, but like I say, on, on current form, uh, I, I'm not overly convinced that it, it will be. Um, because defensively, we've not looked good for quite a few weeks and we've been shipping in a, a hell of a lot of goals. Um, and going forward, we look, um, you know, just as poor at times. And, and, you know, it, it's it's not a great place to be at the moment. And, uh, you know, like I say, hopefully it's just a blip and it's one of them blowout score lines. And because it's against Sheffield, it'll always be sort of analysed slightly harder um, because it's a rival game. But, you know, realistically, they don't come round too often. Um, so hopefully it is just a, a bit of a one-off. Tina, what was your reaction? I was obviously watching on... Twitter, you know, re- refreshing the uh, refreshing the old timeline. Uh, I, w- I wasn't too bothered at the time because I was at the NIC watching Paul Simon, so I was having a, I was having a fantastic night. So I didn't really care about the hockey score, to be honest. Mm. Um, I-, I wasn't surprised that at the end of the first we were three and nil down. Um, I, I I knew at that point we weren't going to win. I- I'd already written the game off. At, you, know, you go you go three nil down to the Steelers in their barn. It's it's a very long hard road from that, especially, you know, like Andy says, the form that we're in three nil. I did I, I I had no confidence we were coming back from that anyway. So, you know, after after I sort of saw the, the end of the first period scoreline, I I just didn't bother refreshing after that. I just I didn't bother looking. So, you know, I sort of came out of the NIC and I'm you know I'm on the bus going home and that's when I started to catch up and everything. It was just 
depressing. <laughs> I'm just scrolling through, scrolling through Twitter. You know, obviously there's a few people from other teams that that, that I follow, and you know, they're they're just you know incredulous and and you know they, they think it's you know think it's hilarious and they, you know there's surprise and there's Panthers fans. You know, it's all doom and gloom. I can't. I, I was surprised it was such a heavy scoreline, but I'm not surprised we lost. Mm. It it was, you know, after you know, coming out on Friday and just sort of thinking, yeah, do you know that that was a, a decent, you know, fairly decent performance. Yeah, we weren't great, but you know, it was a win, and maybe that'll be a nice confidence booster. And you know, maybe we'll go up to Sheffield, and you know, we'll maybe we'll come away with it with a point or something, or you know, at the very least, maybe we'll we'll see a resurgence of the Panthers team that w- that were that we think is there, that we hope is there. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's. The, I, I, I think we've graduated from. I'm sure that team is there somewhere. To I think that team is there somewhere. And oh my God, where is that team that we saw at the beginning of the season? I think we've you know we've just sort of sunk to that level now. So the the fact that we lost, not surprised. The fact that we lost so heavily, a little bit more surprising. Um, yeah, it was. I, it's a good job I had something else to do, <laughs> quite frankly, because I think I think I would have been a lot more angry about it. Paul. Um, one thing is just to back up what Andy was saying. Since we last won in the league, which was the 9th of October, we've scored, managed to score a grand total of 11 goals and let in 29. Mm. So, Sorry. you know, even, yeah, even, even before last night, that's, we're getting, you know, we're getting be, beaten 2-1 every game. Um, there is a positive that the Panthers can take from all of this, though. The next two games are on the season ticket, so that means that even if anybody's so disgusted they don't want to turn up, (laughs) they'll have the money anyway. (laughs) Yeah, true. I mean, one of the things that that really struck me this morning when I was looking through social media and looking looking at the cage is Sheffield fans saying that they didn't enjoy it because it was just so one-sided. There was no fight from the Panthers that they actually lost interest it wasn't enjoyable for them because it was it was just so easy there's a, a friend of mine a Sheffield fan who I'm, I'm known for many years and, and me and her I've give each other some pretty vitriolic abuse after every uh, Panthers Steelers game and even she, 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 she you know that doesn't matter no, it's, it's not it's not my wife, it's not my wife uh, but she that's she, the same description uh, but she um she messaged me this morning on Facebook and just said I didn't find it enjoyable it was dull because it was so easy. I'm like, what the hell is going off off with your team? And I could only reply, I don't know. I really, really so there, don't so know. So there's another positive then. What's they that? might have beaten us, but they didn't enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know what we're moaning about. It's, it's all it's all happy stuff. And any port in a storm. Uh, we have had some Ask TCW questions which do relate to this particular game, so we will we'll, uh, go through those now. Jonathan Ferney, who was uh, commentating on the highlights, uh, which are on Steelers TV, if you can actually stomach them <laughs> they're, they're not they're not great viewing if you're a Panthers fan if I'm honest he says should Corey Nielsen have called a timeout if so when because no timeout was called at all during the game Andy well I think in hindsight you probably say after the third goal yeah which, which is the, yeah which is what I would have said as well but then by the same token after the third goal was conceded we didn't score we didn't concede again for a while so you could argue that it perhaps wasn't needed then after all, but I would, you know, it's one of them things in hindsight, if you, if you concede three goals in best part of two minutes, you'd say, call it after the first goal, mm. um, take a bit of a sting out of it. But obviously at the time you, you, you can't do that. Um, but I, I would have thought, you know, after the third goal, uh, would have been sort of the ample time to do it. But obviously I suppose in, in sort of a, a strange way, it kind of proved with the fact that we managed to see it as 3-0 through to the end of the period that it probably wasn't overly necessary as such. Mm. Um, another one from Colin Basford. He says, why leave Henry Passel in last night and crush the confidence he built up on Friday? Paul? I might be wrong, but I thought that uh, I know that Beatman was injured in, in warm-up. Yes, I believe that's but... the case. But 
Um, I mean, why was he arrested? We don't know why he was arrested on, on Friday. Maybe it was something to do with that. But at the end of the day, we've got three netminders. We can warm up three netminders as far as I'm aware and then only sort of play two. So, um, you know, why wasn't Green... Well, was Green there? Was, um, yes, was he, he, there yes any he was. More? Yes, he was. Yeah, so was he there? Was, was then was he there in any more of a um, a role just to write stuff down on a clipboard? Hmm. We've we've got the we've got the resources. We should be utilising them. Yeah. Any any other thoughts on that? Um, only that I'm not sure what the rules is with regarding warming up goal is. I think you can put ultimately you could put Dan Green down on the game sheet, but I think he has to go down as player. Mm. Yeah, he'd have to he'd have to go down mm. as a skater. I think that's what they did with Gospel that time against Edinburgh. Yeah. And used the three netminders. Um, oh, it is possible then. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. You, yeah. Gospel, oh, yeah, Gospel yeah, went, yeah. Gospel went down on the game sheet as uh, as a skater, and um, th- then when when Green went off injured, he he, he obviously had to, had his uh, his gear all ready. The only thing the I issue is it has to be injuries in that regards, folks. If yeah. You can't just change it for the sake of changing it if you, it has to be both goalies are injured to bring on a third mm, fair enough but I mean I suppose the the other thing is did Dan Green have his kit there is, is the other question that we... well, well again that, that just sort of speaks into what Paul was saying you know we've got the resources so why 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 didn't he have his gear there that that it, I, I would turn the question around I mm. mean if 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 he if he didn't have his gear there why not he is a goalie for the Nottingham Panthers and he he should be ready to jump in should a situation like this occur. You know, we, we've been here before where Kowalski had to go off, Green went off injured, and so we had Gospel come in. We, we've, we've directly had this happen to us before when Corey Nielsen and Rick Strachan have been on the bench. So they are aware uh, you know, of a scenario like that. It's, it's not even like it's happened to another team. It's happened to us. So if Dan Green has travelled with the, with the team and his, his equipment hasn't, then I would I would question why. Hmm. Uh, it's also worth pointing out that that Henry Pastel has now played two games in Sheffield and conceded 15 goals. However, the reports from the game last night say that if it hadn't have been for him, the scoreline could have been a lot worse because he was literally hung out to dry by his defence. I mean, Paul, that's that's a worry. It is. It is, and I think I think what it part of what it shows as well though is is how poor. Blaze were the night before. It's it is a worry, and you know, say so we you know we've let in twenty nine goals in six games, and you know, I mean, all right, you know, hopefully last night was an aberration, and it does skew the figure slightly, but you know that that that's where well one of the rots has mm. set in, mm. and you know and it has, it, you know, Nielsen has to be looking to change it. If he wants to get anything, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, the league's gone. Um, we might be we might be able mathematically to win it, but do we actually look like winning it? That's the the difference. Um, you know, so some, I, I I tell it. Well, I said it after the Belfast game. If I was Corey Nielsen, I wouldn't have a clue where to start. Mm. Okay. Uh, another question. This comes from Yotes on the cage. Is it acceptable for the coach to duck the post game interview after a heavy loss? Andy, well, uh, do we know if he ducks it or? or um, I know he didn't give one. He didn't so give an interview, on. but I, I suppose. I mean, I uh, when when this happened, I always think of that interview he gave after the Bipolo game in the Continental yeah. Cup. <laughs> I was going to say you should ask Owen Bradley that question. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, and that's the one that always comes to mind. And I'd like to think it was because he was giving the team a dressing down. Yeah, but, um, we, um, but we don't know that. Yeah, ultimately we we won't know and, and we'll never know. But you know, realistically, like you say, I'd I'd like to think that the reason why he didn't do any post match uh, interviews with anything was because he was too busy, um, you know, sort of having it out with with the players. Um, it's it's one of the things. Obviously, we'll touch on it later on. I think in one of the questions. But obviously, last year when we beat. Uh, Sheffield 8-0 obviously Tomo came out and was quite you know very open and honest and apologetic and things like that and obviously this time round um, the head coach hasn't done it but by the same token if we've got the resources for other people to do that sort of thing while the head coach can perhaps do um, you know the, the rollicking as it were 
Um, I, I kind of don't have that much of an issue with it. I mean, let's be honest, it's not like we probably won't hear his thoughts on the game. I would imagine that, you know, in, in this week, in the build-up to the... Uh, in the build-up to the uh, Continental Cup, they will be, you know, talking about the previous results and our form and stuff. So I'm sure we'll hear from Corey regarding the result. But obviously, at the time, you know, is a is another Bipolo interview uh, really what's needed right now. Okay. Tina, Paul, anything to add to that? Um, the only thing I'd say is some of the comments are, you know, seeing that in Strachan's interview and all the other stuff that's come out, there's, there's been no apology. Mm. And, you know, one of the things that irritates me massively about this club is, that, you know, they don't apologise when they're rubbish. You know, the, I mean, how many excuses have we seen trotted out for everything except, you know, it would be nice once in a while for somebody to say, you know what, we were cobblers tonight. Mm. And, and you know. um, say we've had, had a, a question from John Casey says, seeing as the official Panthers website only had the same generic match report from last night, does this mean that the management are just disregarding the fans and or just oblivious? While I don't expect a grovelling apology, surely some sort of acknowledgement of the severity of the result is in order. And I think he's right. I mean, well, you, if you, you read you, that before, you know, you, you read through it and it's still nil nil halfway through it. I think the game finished eight one. There's no oh, it was this, it was that, it was the other. Oh, and 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 Sheffield. Oh, they could, they scored a few goals on us. Ooh, mm. and that's it. I mean, I can understand the the club trying to put a positive spin out there yeah. because it's it's a shock. It's a bloody awful result. Let's 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 not like gloss it over. Losing eight one to Sheffield is terrible, but. I think John is absolutely right. There's just no acknowledgement from the club yeah. about how bad it is and how fans will be feeling as well because there's, some fans will be pretty, you know, pretty angry at that result. And, well, at the end uh, of the day, they, they've paid to go and watch. You know, they've paid their money, they've spent their time travelling there. The Panthers are being paid to be there. Hmm. And... Regardless of you know how you you look at um, you know whether it, they should apologise or not, that that's, that makes a huge difference. But going back to you know the yeah, I mean I I agree with what you're saying about you know that you know they they're going to try and put a certain amount of positive spin on it. But look at the the kudos. I think it was it was it Wigan football club got when they essentially repaid the ticket that's prices. That's right. Yes. So the, for all the, the ones, you know, look at the amount. I'm, I'm not I'm not saying Panthers should necessarily do that but it shows what can happen and how the attitude towards a club can change by doing something like that Tina any thoughts um well I, I mean I, I, I apologize if you think this is unacceptable for uh, um, say, sending it out there but uh, you'll have to edit this out later but uh, in terms of the way the Panthers have handled this in terms of PR I they seem to think you can polish a turd um, it's, it, it's not. It, they've just been really. I, I won't say quiet about it. You know, they, they've just sort of. Oh, we had a game in Sheffield. We didn't do very well, but never mind. And then you're going to get yeah. you know good seats still available for the next game, hmm. um, and and they're going to expect that fans are going to be travelling to Odense, which they are. You know, people have. I know there's people already booked to go over there, and you know then they're going to be you know pumping the two home games. Uh, for when we get back, it's um, yeah, so it's some sort of acknowledgement, you know. It, it, it's I know, you know, outwardly, you you don't want to give the impression that this is something that happens on a regular basis. I mean, you know, we're we're, we're getting kind of used to bad results at the moment because you know we are we've we've had a few now in in consecutive form, and it it would just be nice. Like like Paul says, for the Panthers just to say, we were rubbish, <laughs> and that that's a, that's an awful result. We're really sorry that you had to pay money to go and see that, and it's not good enough. And and we're hoping to do better. Mm. Something along those lines. I mean, you know, you don't you don't have to be as blunt and as brutal as that. I and mean, you know, they they pay people to come up with eloquent ways of saying that. And I'm sure if I really thought about it, I could come up with a more eloquent way of saying that and send it to them. But 
I, I don't want to. I'm, I'm not paid by the Panthers organisation. I, I don't do their PR. Um, so I, I will, will just, you know, just sort of put it out there in, in simple terms. You know, it's, it's, it's not hard. The, we, they were rubbish. Uh, they hung the netminder out to dry, for, from what I understand. I mean, obviously, as I said, I wasn't at the game. Um, you know, we, just something to say, we're really sorry about that and we want to do better. We are going to move on and try and get through some of the loads of questions that you've sent us throughout today. Uh, if we don't ask your question, please don't take offence. It's just we've had that many. We can't possibly go through them all. Uh, we're going to start with a couple of questions, actually, with opposite viewpoints, uh, that should create quite a bit of, of discussion. First one comes from Matthew Dodd. He says, we talk about players only being here for a paycheck. Could the same be said for Corey? It's quite widely known that Corey wanted to go back home. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not so sure about that one, but anyway. He's won every competition here, something which every Panthers fan should be grateful to him for. The only thing he's chasing is a second league title. I can't help but feel he's maybe disinterested and only here as it's an easy option. The next question that sort of goes against that a little bit is from Max Artis it says why is it that Corey's head is up for the chop every time we hit bad form if we adopted this mentality then we would have had more team coaches in the England football team do you think the team needs a shake up from the top down GM has been doing the bare minimum for the last few years it's time for a change so uh, Andy I'll start with you you know your, your thoughts on, on both of those questions uh, well, I think I think in response to Max Artis, I think ultimately it, it comes as part of the territory. Ultimately, if you go on a bad a bad run, there you're automatically going to look at why it's go why the team's performing uh, poorly, and ultimately it will always there will always be questions and finger points in at the coach, uh, and that's part of the job. I'm sure Corey knows that, um, and it's part of the territory. Um, with regards. The the initial question um, from from Matthew Dodd, I, I'm not convinced it, that it was widely known that he wanted to go back home. Yeah, me uh, neither. No, as I'm... far as as far as I, I I'm aware, you know, he, he's he is comfortable here, um, and whether you consider that a good thing or a bad thing, you know, he's got he's got a child in school. Uh, obviously, he's got uh, one one playing hockey back in Canada. Um, but you know they've been here. What's this? Eleven years now. Um, realistically, it, it's where they call home. So I, I don't. I don't think. Uh, I, I certainly wasn't aware that there was a, a sort of push for him wanting to to go back to to Canada. Um, and obviously, yes, it might have been the easy option for him in the sense that it's where he wanted to be, and he was offered a contract. Um, but with regards to the disinterested, I, I don't think so at all. I just think it's 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 one of them things. It's a dip in form. Um, the the difference is at the moment, ultimately, especially after a loss like we've just had, you can't really see us getting out of it anytime soon. Um, but obviously, that's something for for sort of him and and Strax and everybody else to sort of, of sort of rally around and, and come up with the answers. Um, but you know, ultimately, it, it comes with a territory that when these things happen, he's always going to get questioned. Um, you know, and it, it, it it's sort of one of them things, I suppose. Um, but I'm I'm sure he's fully aware of uh, what's going on and and what people expect. Okay, uh, Paul, your thoughts. Um, well, you know, the book has, like Andy was pretty much said, the book has to stop somewhere. The thing that that worries me is that we've been here before and it doesn't feel like any lessons have been learnt from it if if I'm honest um, and you know it's, it's one of the things that unfortunately has to be looked at has to be questioned and you know that's what that's what fans will, will ultimately do um, but I, I'm sort of somewhere in between the two of those arguments, if I'm honest. Tina, I, I think like like Andy says, it comes with the territory. I think with with us being a, a league oriented, um, 
a league or orientated sport you know which sort of goes against mo- most other hockey countries I, you know, that that mentality comes from from the football uh, you know with the league being the be all and end all and i think the the same attitude can sometimes be filtered through in in terms of managers you know i mean you, you hear a story every other week about a, a football manager being sacked or you know leaving you know or, or you know moving on for whatever reason and i think i think that sort of attitude can can find its way in into hockey as well um you know the, the, nielsen's been here a long time um you know and you know he obviously wants both of his his kids to get um, a hockey education uh, over in Canada because that's that that's how they're going to have the best chance of progressing uh, with, with their hockey and their education simultaneously. You know, I, I don't think this country's in a, a good enough. St- well, it isn't the, the youth the youth hockey isn't in a good enough state for, um, for for them to get that kind of education over here. So I think that that may be the reason why it's you know in inverted commas widely known that he wants to go back over to Canada. I don't think he necessarily wants to, but he just wants his kids to go go over there. And that, and that's fine, you know, he he you know, they, every parent wants the best for their child. And you know, that's that's what um Corey and his wife think is is the best way forward for them, you know, whether they want to follow them over there and go and be with them while they're getting that education is another story. Um it's and you know, if, if, in respect of his, his head, always been up for the chop. It, 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 that's that's where that's where the book always stops with the coach. Um, but I should think, it? Should with it? the with <laughs> the club, the club, the 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 way it is. I mean, Max did make the point. You know, do you think the team needs to shake down from from the top down? So I th- do we I do think, we need to be looking higher? I think that well. The, 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 I think there's an awful lot of gripes with the Nottingham Panthers as an organisation, not just the Nottingham Panthers as a team. We've, we have seen a Nottingham Panthers team be coached to a league title. It it has happened in our lifetime, despite, you know, serious reservations that we would ever, that we would ever see it. Um, And, you know, years and years of us having 1956 chanted in our faces. So we know it can be done. And we know it can be done with the personnel that are on board now, but nothing ever stays the same. Things are always changing. So something has changed. Um, so as there is unrest within the organisation, uh, the, the team changes all the time, and that's the nature of the sport. So you can't blame it on on the changing of on ice personnel because that's been happening since year dot. We've had a steady coaching tandem for a while now and and as I said you know that that coaching tandem has brought us a league title what we don't what we don't we don't see a lot of what happens you know in in the in the office organization and we we hear little bits and bobs here and there but something is definitely not right so in terms of in terms of the on ice results yes the coaches are responsible for that, but they have to have the support from the organisation. Um, we don't know if they are getting that support. If they're not getting that support, then yes, something something is is not right, and something needs to change. Okay. That leads on to to another question, which comes from uh, a view from the Bridge podcast. And, and Paul, I'll put this one to you initially: Are the management under pressure, or have they built enough good faith previously? Under pressure to do what? I guess. Um, I guess. Are they because of? Are they under pressure because of the situation? I. Th- I think neither. Mm. Frankly, and I'm not saying that. And, I, and I'm not saying that. No, I, I think that that's a good thing because I. I don't. Have they built up good faith? I don't think so. You know, through. I, I don't see anything that they've done that, that that would engender that sort of good faith. But and and are they under pressure? I doubt it because I don't. I mean, I could be wrong. I wish I. Hopefully, I am. But I don't see the Nottingham Panthers as a results-driven team. Mm. I well, not in results in terms of games. I, I see them as a financially driven team. Um, I think I think I, I must have said this before. Every every before every home game, there are half a dozen. Tweets go out saying, 
you can park here for this amount, you can catch the tram, you can do this, you can do that, eat here, drink there. We sign a player, or something like, you know, last night happens. You know, we sign a player, we're told to, all we get is look on the website. We, we, we sign, a, you know, we, we lose like we did last night, and it's, well, not much happens. Buy tickets for the next game, we're off to Europe, yay. It's, 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 I, 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 I don't think the priorities are right, if I'm honest. Mm. Yeah, I, I, now, you know, I don't want to see us going going bust every week, um, but we've got to remember that we are a sporting organisation. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. Okay. Can I go now then? <laughs> Next question comes from David Spence. Andy, this one's coming to you first. He says, how deluded are some of our fan base? <laughs> well, um, the one I am after that, but yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, I'm sure every team has them. Um, but, I, yeah, I mean, reading some of the some of the stuff on the back of not necessarily just yesterday's you know result but over some of the performances recently um you know some of the things you read on on various things are just uh, so um ludicrous so yeah just sort of really clutching at straws to sort of back the team or back up a certain player um that I mean, I mean, they don't even make sense uh, on on a lot of them, and you know, it's it's one of the reasons, uh, you know, I've I've made no, um, you know, secret of the fact that I, I actually deleted, a, you know, a, an awful lot of my social media sort of side of things. You know, I, I've I stopped following practically everybody on, in the elite league um, that I used to. I'm not in any of the Facebook groups anymore. I've, I've stopped reading the cage and, and uh, the hockey forum and stuff like that because it's it sort of, you know, yes, you get, you get both sides of it and it is only ever extremes because ultimately the people that are content don't ever really feel the need to have to voice for how content they are. It's either the people that are really angry or the people that are, are seeing it as, everything's peachy and rosy but i mean specifically this this week with the little snippets that i've seen you know it isn't peachy and rosy and yet you're still seeing comments and 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 things you know talking like it's one of the greatest teams that, that we've had and and you know it it might turn out to be that way perhaps i mean let's be honest i'm 99 certain that it won't be but you know, there, there's not a single player at the, you know in, in, performing at the moment um, that would. I, I don't think they'd trouble any other, you know, starting position for any other team in the league at the moment on current form, and that's that's the biggest problem um, in in my eyes. But obviously, from from what you're reading, some of them are, are you know are world beaters, and, and, and they're really not. And obviously. I think in in a in a way that that kind of attitude, um, if that if that kind of attitude was sort of wholesale across the fan base, I think that would be more dangerous for the club than if it was you know all you know the fan base were completely the opposite. I think um, an entire fan base of people that are happy to accept uh, you know the the way things are going as as you know oh, they're trying hard and aren't they great is a lot more damaging um, to the club itself. And if everyone was saying this is awful and, you know, every, everybody needs to be sacked and, you know, start again, let's just, you know, stop playing hockey this season and start again next year and that sort of thing. I think it's a lot more damaging that people are, are not necessarily willing to accept it because it's it's not about the acceptance. It's about this, this strange um, sort of everything's peachy sort of attitude. And I, I think that's that's really quite scary. Uh, anything to add, guys? No, I don't. Um, think so. I just think I agree, Tyler. If we got Andy's, Andy's said. Yep. Yep. Okay, <laughs> uh, we shall move on to our next question. Again, a, a couple that we've grouped together along the same theme from Sally Utton. How many fans support the trip to Europe right now? Shouldn't we be focusing on the league? Uh, and from Glenn Watson, do you any of you think that after our latest outing in Europe, if it all goes wrong? Will there be any changes? Uh, Tina, you start off on that one. Um, well, I, I mean, the trip to Europe is happening. 
whether we're lucky or not. So um, I know, uh, as, as I said earlier, you know, there's, there's people that have already booked to go. So um, they, they may as well go out there and, you know, go and support the team as they intended to, whether they'll do it with as much enthusiasm and vigour as, as they would have done had we not lost our last five important games. Um, you know, who knows? Uh, but, you know, good luck to them because I think, you know, the... the confidence of the Panthers team is going to be on the floor right now mm. so I don't it's 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 not going to be anything like the last round it's it's going to be it's going to be tough anyway but we are in a, an absolutely diabolical run of form at the moment it's going to make it twice as bad so the the the, the, the question is shouldn't we be focusing on the league yes I would like to focus on the league but we um, are committed to playing in a round of the Continental Cup so, you know, I, I don't want us to, you know, just, just all of a sudden say, no, no, sorry, you know, we're having a bit of a domestic problem here. You know, we, we, we can't come, we're going to concede. And I don't think there'd be, I, I don't think that would go down too well. It wouldn't show our league in, in a good light. It wouldn't show us as a team in a good light. So that's, that's just where we are at the moment. You know, this, this is where the schedule is and, and you know, the, the team is going over there and, more than anything else, you know, whenever you do play in a competition that is outside of your own domestic league, it's you, you are you are representing your league. So we need to go out out there and do the best we can because, you know, we we don't want the the well, I, I, I don't know if it would happen or you know what what the parameters would be, but I, I don't really want the Continental Cup to you know to all of a sudden say. No, we don't want you. <laughs> we, we don't want a team from the UK because you're unreliable or or whatever. So that's that. You know, it, it's there, and we need to go and make a good showing of it, and then come back with you know renewed enthusiasm and, and make the best of the games that we've got coming up in in our league. In terms of uh, of changes, I'm I, I'm, I'm kind of surprised there haven't been a few already, and um, I, I think letting. Letting Callus go, I think that might have been a bit early. You know, we're still missing a couple of key players in port, you know, that we, you know, we, we could have done with the body. I mean, he's, you know, Peter Callus may have only scored one assist, but he, you know, he could have given somebody five, five minutes extra on the bench, uh, you know, for, or five minutes less on the ice to put it another way. Um, you know, you could have had a few less tired bodies. So. I, I don't. I don't think the Continental Cup specifically. I don't think the results out there will trigger any changes. But I, if if we carry on when we get back, as we have when you know over these last few weeks, then I'd be very surprised if there weren't some changes. Uh, Paul, I was never that keen on being in the Continental Cup in the first place. If I'm if I'm honest. Um, you know anything that we're, we're I'm, I'm sure I read that the club say this. You know that we do. We're entering this as a um, as a reward for the fans. What a ridiculous reason for doing something. You know, you want to reward me? Turn up and play in the competitions that matter: the league, the Challenge Cup, the playoffs. But I mean, no. I, I like Tina says. I don't think that the, any changes that. Uh, should come will be down to what happens in that so it should be down to what's happening week in week out but unlike her I'm not given the way it's, we've taken too long to replace people in previous seasons I'm not surprised nothing much has happened yet Okay, Andy um, I think ultimately I think unless we win all three games this weekend um, then I actually think there will be changes probably next week Um I think they've they made no bones about the fact that there's the talk of we've got a decent chance in the Continental Cup this year. Um, having seen us recently, I'm not convinced anymore. Um, but obviously, I, I just think if we carry on the way we're playing and we lose two or three of the games this weekend um, in the Continental Cup, I think you know there has to be changes because. You know, it isn't good enough that the hand will be forced, and it's not necessarily on the back of this weekend's games. But I just think it'll be on the back of everything. It'll be a big, you know, culmination of it all. Uh, and I think, obviously, for three games this weekend, um, unless they go well, 
and there might be a bit of a you know a bit of a breathing space perhaps if we win all three and, and progress but I think certainly that there will be more changes made to this club because I think they that they need them. Okay. Um, and another question that follows on comes from Lee, Lee Constable and it's about the league. He says, it's November the 13th. Looking at our team and how we, we are compared to the Steelers and Devils and even the Giants, do you think that it's pretty much it for us in the league this season? It might be early days, but I can't see us going on a fantastic run. We've already slipped up twice at home to the Giants in games that we need to win. And the Steelers and Devils are better sides than the Giants, I would say. So I feel we would be lucky to even potentially beat them two teams playing at home right now. I've got to say, he's right from from what he says. I, I wouldn't be confident in any games against those teams. We've lost to Sheffield. We've lost two home games to the Giants. I mean, we, we have beaten the Devils a couple of times, but earlier in the season they're looking an incredibly strong outfit at the moment so Paul it's 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 not looking good at all is it how brief do you want me to be um <laughs> is it just no <laughs> we are out we are out of the league yeah I, I, and I hate I hate to say it but yeah I, I totally agree because I just we're just not as good as yeah, those I mean, teams all right, the, the way the, this league is structured, ten points isn't really that much. But this is not about. It's the difference between statistics and reality. We can do it. Do we look like we're going to do it? No. I mean, and there are other factors beyond Sheffield, Cardiff, etc. We've already lost. Four, is it, I think it's four times as many games against teams in the other conference as we did in the whole of the season that we won the league. Mm. Four times, and it's it's November. You don't go a whole month without winning a game and win the league. Mm. Tina, uh, Andy, any different opinion to that? Do you think we've still got a chance, either of you? No, mm. not a chance, mm. no. Andy? I can't. I, well, the, sorry. The, I think the key, sorry, just, just, the, just about the, the key. Th- I don't think it's. I don't think it's necessarily about our form anymore. I just can't see Sheffield losing enough games for us to catch them. Yeah, fair point. Very fair point. Mm. Andy. Um. I, well, I actually sort of kind of agree, but for the other opposite reason. I think you know. I, I think even if we turn a corner and beat Sheffield for the rest of the season. Uh, I just I, I just can't see where the spark's going to come in this team at the moment mm-hmm. on current form. You know, it, we're, we're shipping in goals, um, left, right and centre, and we haven't got a player that's sort of, you know, grabbing the game by the scruff of the neck and, and, and scoring goals. Or, or at least, you know, saying goal, you know, making plays to set up other people to score goals. We, there just isn't a spark in in, in this team, and, and everything seems to be going wrong at once. Um, and so, ultimately, you know, ten points might be surmountable, but I, unfortunately, I, I think realistically, there's a fair chance that it's going to get worse before it gets better at the moment, um, and that's the issue. Okay. One of the other issues that we've had and um, we seem to suffer from since the season we won the league is injuries. Uh, and the group of questions here, Colin Basford, why do we seem to suffer injuries more than other teams? Is it recruitment or something else such as training physio? From Ian Braisby, Panthers are well known for not revealing the nature and severity of injuries. Is this really to avoid tipping off opponents or because they genuinely don't have a clue? Is it time to look closely at the club's fitness, conditioning and recovery regime? Every season we have a long injury list with different players in the team. Can't stop knocks happening in a physical sport, but players can be conditioned so those knocks don't keep them out and expert expert recovery minimises layoffs. Uh, And then another question that follows on from that from Karen Locke. Why are we not getting replacement players for, in, for the injured insurance pays their wages while they are injured it's leaving the guys left to do double shifts and I suppose that uh, that came to fruition last night when we had 15 skaters to Sheffield to 20 so uh, who wants to come in on that 
little lot it's first. A, it's, a, it's a knock-on effect, isn't it, in, to, mm. in terms of you know the injuries. Mm. You're expecting players to play more, so they get injured more. Mm. And wh- why we don't do it... We've been talk- we talked about resources earlier. I really, really do not know, and it happens time and time again. Um, in terms of the, you know, the why we keep getting injuries, I don't know. This is something I I raised on on here a couple of years ago. It, it kept happening. I mean, you'd, even the season when we won the league, you know, we had injuries. It's just that they all happened to Martin Tuma. <laughs> so um, that really season. Know. It's a bad season, obviously. Jonathan Weaver broke his hand, and Robert Farmer and I think David Clark didn't start the season. Am I right? Farmer wasn't with us the season we won the league. Oh, well, there you Lee, go. Then. Lee was out for a while. <laughs> yeah, as well. And Clark, I season. think Clark was out for a bit. But I think generally, the season we won the league, we didn't suffer from injuries. No, not no, not at all. But we were we were fit. That, that's why. Yeah, I mean, well, realistically, we had, an, we, we had an abundance of import, didn't we? we, we the, the biggest problem we had was choosing who to sit. Great. I, I, you know, I, I just think that, you know, injuries are going to happen. That's a given. There's, there's no way on earth you're going to go through a season um, with every single player playing every single game uh, from day one, and there will be times when you are short benched um, because of injuries. But it's, it's the frequency of them. Um, that happens, and some of them, you know, are some of them. Realistically, there's not a great deal you can do about them. You know, harping on to that that season um, that we won the league, or even uh, Jeff Wall last last year um, with his injury. You know, he, he blocks a shot, and and I, I think it was Wall broken ribs last year. Yeah, um, I believe that's what the uh, the team referred to as warrior damage. <laughs> right. And obviously, the year we won the league, it was a broken hand for Weaver. You know, things like that, you can't do a lot about. But you can't realistically. No, you, um, you can't condition for a puck hitting you and you and breaking yeah, a bone. That, and break yeah, bones. That's unlucky. But, but muscle strains, um, you know, not necessarily concussions, I suppose, because ultimately, if someone you know takes your head off, then you're going to be concussed. But, you know, things like the, the muscle damages and stuff like that, and just the, the sheer abundance of injuries, you know, it, it, it is concerning because we seem to be the only one that ever, that ever consistently seemingly has them, you know. And, and I know that there's other teams that have injuries, and I know that obviously they'll look at it and say, well, there's not a lot we can do about this one, there's not a lot we can do about that one, blah, 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 blah. And they even joke about it when they they made that press release about visiting somebody from Goose Fair, some sort of oh, side yes. person. I believe she was called Gypsy Boswell, <laughs> and and it's like, can we not just take this a bit more seriously and and perhaps you know look into the reasons why we keep having depleted squads with injuries and and look at getting some sort of professional. Uh, and serious sort of strength and conditioning rather than just using a, a local gym um, and, a, and a sort of almost like a personal trainer basis. I mean, I don't, I don't know whether they are having strength and conditioning training or, or anything like that. I'd like to think they're having something along those lines, but the, you know, we've not had it out in the open that we're using proper strength and conditioning training for sports um, since we won the league and, and it was Mark Coles at M10. Now, obviously, from what I'm, I'm led to believe, the reason why Mark Coles isn't doing it anymore is down to um, you know Mark Coles' lifestyle. He's, he's, from what I gather, he's a now a professional bodybuilder and obviously doesn't have the time um, to to commit to doing that side of things because he, he has to put obviously a lot of emphasis and time and effort into his own life. Um, but why have we not really replaced him? Um, in that regards, and again, you know, we might have done, but it's that it's that <laughs> knowledge and the fact that you don't see anyone there at the arena. You used to see Mark Coles there every game, um, behind the glass, watching the games, and and we might have someone that looks over, you know, fitness and and regimes and stuff, and, and that's you know fair enough if it is. But unfortunately, if we don't see it as fans and we keep getting these injuries, these questions will always get asked. Okay. Uh... Tina, um, I I don't really think I can add to any of that. I think 
Andy's probably just about covered it. Um, it's it's just you know for, as a fan, it's just disappointing when when we have to keep talking about it. Mm. It's it's just it's boring. Um, and the only the only way we, the, 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 that that record is going to get changed is if the Panthers do something about it. And you know, I, I think you know, and, and Andy's got it spot on. If it, why why is there no strength and conditioning? I, I would like to think because I mean, you know, we, everybody knew that Mark Coles was doing it when in, in, in the year he was doing it. So you'd like to think if somebody else was doing that as a sort of specialised role that. You know, there'd be some sort of you know communication about it. Well, and to, to be fair, as well, they deserve the recognition. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If well, we yeah, have exactly. if we have a, a strength and conditioning coach on our team, why are they not? Why are they not getting any recognition? Yeah. Well, the, well, this is the th- this is my point. I mean, you'd like to think if there was anybody doing that, that we would know about it. And and if if we don't, that's that's a bit of a poor showing. So you know, I th- assumes a horrible word, uh, but I. I would assume that the lack of any chatter about it means there isn't anybody doing anything like that. So while the team are training, yeah, that's fine. They're doing the things they need to do to keep them fit, you know, keep them fit for a game of hockey. What, but what the what the Nottingham Panthers are not doing is ensuring that they are doing everything that they can to safeguard those guys, the, the, the guys out on the ice from getting all these little niggly injuries that that are preventable, essentially. Um, another question which, which sort of relates uh, comes from Neil Fletcher he says should the club have a youth development scheme there appears to have been a, a reduction in young Brits progressing to the team possibly due to the increase of the import limit a reserve of young players may help when short benched also with a longer term view now I I feel very very strongly about this and I, I think it's something we should have been doing since we moved into the new arena and we haven't we have a, a national league team play in the same building, the Nottingham Lions. And I know that there has been some cases of Lions players going to train with the Panthers, but but that's it. I would like to see much, much closer ties between the Panthers and the Lions with a view to bringing those players through uh, to either sit on the bench or to ice when we do, when we are short benched, or to even give us a little bit more depth. I just don't understand why it's never happened now I've spoken to some, some of the, the, the people involved with the Lions and and they would like something to happen and you know it's. but I would just like to see a link up between the two clubs and I'm just amazed that even 15 years since we moved into the arena or 16 years whatever it is there's still nothing there and I think it, it, would, it could only bring positive benefits for both teams so Anyone else want to come in on that one? Well, yeah, I, I just very quickly because I mean, I, I don't, I, I have no experience with, um, with actually playing hockey. I have, you know, I don't, I, I don't know an awful lot about the actual playing of, of ice hockey. But I, I would, I would go one step further to be honest, Johnny, because you know, we we know that there are various youth teams that are playing. Uh, out of out of Nottingham Arena, and you know they start from what like six seven years old upwards up to you know up, up to like sixteen, uh, may, may, maybe a little bit beyond. Why are we not talking to them? I mean, Cor- both of Corey Nielsen's boys have been through that system, so you'd you'd like you know he he knows that that facility is there. So what's to stop us? You know, I mean, there's kids that that, that are coming to the the arena week in week out. And you know, training in a, in a Nottingham youth system, there's, there's surely there is some conversation that can be had there, even before they get to the Lions. It, but sh- sure, surely something can happen there, hmm. because I, I mean, you know, would it be wrong of me to say that that you know, Ollie Betridge has probably come through th- through some Nottingham junior team. I, yeah. I, I don't yes, know off yes, the top yes, of my yeah. head. Blacko, Farmer. Yes. Yes. Um, gospel, <laughs> you know, just they—they've all, they you know, all—all all of these have got. Well, I mean, pick another name out. Who, who you know, not not with Tom us, but, you know, was looking from Tom Norton, Josh Ward. I mean, you know, he's flying planes now, but you know, he he came through through that system. So, and and I, I you know, I agree with, you know, I, I agree with, uh, with with one of the questions. You know, it's, like, it's been a, it's been quite a long time since <coughs> we've seen 
anybody coming for any because I, I know when I first started coming to watch there would be some young Brit who was there you know ready to go eager stood on the bench and when I first started watching it was Lacko and you know because it was before he was he was sent to the EPL I, I think um and and Norton and Ward you know they 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 were the guys and then obviously you know we've had Betteridge we you know we, we sort of fleetingly uh, had had a, an association with with gospel but you know, it, it it seems to have come to a halt. It seems to have come to a grinding halt. There seems to be no emphasis on, on you know, bringing any any kids through that are coming through the Nottingham Junior System. I, I remember that you know the, the the first time Ollie Betteridge stepped on the ice. What was it? Two days after his sixteenth birthday, because everybody was so excited about him. You know, it, it, this kid can really play, but we've got to wait until he's turned sixteen until he can go on the ice with the seniors. You know, mm-hmm. it's just. And, and yeah, yeah, and he got on the ice, and he didn't do enough. He didn't do a lot then because he was tiny. <laughs> but he he skated out there with such enthusiasm, and it was lovely to see. And I don't understand why we stopped doing that. I don't know if it's just too much effort, but you know, I, I, I'm sure we've said this before. Where's the next David Clark coming from? Where even is the next Robert Lakovich coming from? You know, it, it we just it just seems to have come to a grinding halt, and it's worrying because. You know, if we if we get to the point, I mean, I wasn't around for the ISL days, but from what I understand, it disappeared up its own backside because there was just too too many imports and it was just you know, hemorrhaging money left, right, and centre. So we we can't afford to get to that because then we're going to be back to square one again, or you know, we could be back to square zero with no league and no hockey. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, next question, and uh, it's another one from Ian Braceby. It says, is Stephen Schultz really a good enough player to hold open a roster spot for while he recovers from injury after injury? For me, he's not. Decent player, but to play an input down for about half of your games, the player needs to blow the league apart when fit, and Schultz, Schultz doesn't do that. Andy, your thoughts on that? Um, yeah, there are, I suppose there kind of has to be a point where you, you have to sort of think, you know what, it's not your fault, it's not our fault, it's just one of them things, but we, we kind of have to, you know, how long does it have to go on for before you before you sort of cut ties? You know, I, I don't think it's nice in, in any way, and it's certainly not necessarily Stephen Schwartz's fault. Um, but, you, you know, I think I think the biggest problem is it's the, it's the replacement of him. Mm. In, in the sense that if if we you know have twenty uh, well how many imports is it this year thirteen fourteen fourteen so if we have sixteen seventeen imports and you have healthy scratches week in week out and you you know you pick players that are playing on form and things like that then I kind of don't think it's an issue because obviously you just say well when he's fit. When he gets back up to full fitness, when you feel he deserves to step back onto the ice because because he's fit, he comes back into the team and he, and he makes a difference. But the issue is at the moment is obviously we are crucially missing the, the, the bloke out on the ice. And, you know, on, on the back of the season we had last year and obviously what he's played six games so far this season... And we're now in, you know, we're now in November. It, it is a, it is a worry. Um, you know, what I would say is we, we went a, a fair few seasons with um, Kowalski, where people were questioning his fitness. Um, you know, with a couple of groin injuries, I think it was initially, um, and then obviously he, he was the netminder when we, when we won the league and. And, you know, he, he's still, to me, um, the best netminder I've ever seen in Nottingham. Um, I wasn't around for Robbins, um, who most people seem to sort of think is the only person that perhaps rivals him uh, in that, that regard. Or Kowalski's the only person that rivals Robbins uh, for a lot of the people that, that were around in Robbins' day. Um, so, you know, it is one of them things. You can't... I mean, ultimately, can you... Legally, can you can you get rid of a player because he's injured? I don't I don't know whether there's any sort of laws around that. Is it unfair dismissal? I suppose if 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 we're getting down sort of those type of routes. But I, I think there does have to be 
some sort of common sense, whether that be from a player. I seem to remember not that long ago, but I, I, I genuinely can't remember who it was, that a player got injured and he actually left kind of as, of his own accord and just said, look, you know what? I'm not fully fit. I, you know, I don't think I'm going to be a hundred percent for a while. So I'm going to go back home. I'll let you guys replace me. Um, and you know, and, and see what happens that way. I, I have a feeling it was Bob Wren, but I, I, I kind of. I think you might be right. I, I, I'm not a hundred percent sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, there has to be that kind of. You'd like to think there's got to be some sort of mutual respect where the player realizes that, you know what? I don't think I'm going to be, you know, to my to my best. Um, but obviously, you know, we don't know what's wrong with Shorts at the moment. Well, I, I don't know what's wrong with Shorts at the moment. Um, but it is a worry that obviously after missing so much last season that he's already sort of started this season in the similar sort of light. And it, it is a worry. And it's a shame because when he is on the ice, I do think he is a game changer. And I think he's a very good player. Um, I, I don't necessarily think that a player has to be, you know, ripping the league apart when they're when they're fully fit, if they're spending time off the ice, as long as they contribute to the team. And I think, realistically, Stephen Schultz does that. Um, and I do think he kind of warrants enough to have that roster spot. But, you know, while ever we're playing without him, we are a, a, a weaker team. And obviously, if there is no sort of light at the end of a the tunnel, then, then we've got to be looking at, you know, getting somebody in in replacement. Mm. I mean I I tend to to agree with that but I think he's a very good player. I think he is worth a roster spot. Just replace him with somebody when he's injured. Bring someone in who's decent. Other teams manage it. Why can't we? And I know Peter Callis was brought in as a replacement but he's gone now. So, you know, let, let let's bring someone in. We're supposedly the richest team in the country. Surely we've got the resources to have a squad. Uh, and that's the way I see it and, and I think that, that also links back to the previous question about youth development as well and having a group of youth players who could come in as well so yeah uh, I, I, well we will see what happens over the next few weeks I'm sure uh, next question comes from the flying shirt off the cage and I'm going to direct this one to you Paul first he says is the culture and ethos of the Panthers organisation ever really going to change or would we be better off just accepting things and becoming night out fans will there ever be a point in time when someone at the club ever just says this really isn't good enough right now I don't think so I honestly believe and I'd love for somebody to come, somebody who knows, to come and tell me I'm wrong, honestly. But I honestly believe we're just uh, the only, the only re- result we're looking for is a decent financial one. Mm. But in terms of accepting that, I, I don't, I don't think I personally could. You know, this this club means too much to me to just turn up and go, turn up and just drink the god awful beer and clap along to the music at the end of um, the day it's sport isn't it it's a sport it's, it's sport yeah you know and, and for all, and all the all the drama and that you know yeah, I, I think if you if you're just happy to go and not invest in whatever happens and have a have a drink and all whatever you might as well go to the pictures go to the theatre mm-hmm. go and watch a pantomime no, mind you, you probably already are doing. <laughs> but, um, if they insert your own joke here. <laughs> <laughs> it's behind you. Eight times last yeah. night. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but yeah, basically, basically, to to answer the question, I don't think. I honestly don't think anything will change. It goes back to the the earlier question from the view from the bridge about the, the management being under pressure. I don't think they're under pressure because they're still producing. The money, and you know, like I say, somebody come and somebody come out and tell me I'm wrong, and show me I'm wrong more than tell, mm. because that you know, the, um, you know, actions are um, you know are far more powerful than than words themselves. But you know, just just show me that I'm wrong. But unfortunately, I don't think I am. Okay. I mean, I, I I thought 
on Friday night. It was a smaller crowd than usual, but I thought the atmosphere was better, and I think that was because there was more hardcore fans there. It was a, it was wasn't on the season ticket, so you had to actually physically buy a ticket for it, and you had to want to be there. There wasn't yeah. the usual what we call the Saturday nighters there who just use it as a, a place to start drinking before they go out in the town. Well, I mean, yeah, that's what I've a... always said about going to places like, you know, with all, with, you know, with all due respect, Coventry, mm-hmm. Edinburgh, Fife, you know, the, the, those rings, they're not, you know, lovely, comfortable places like, like the NIC, is like Sheffield Arena is up or, or you know or whatever. So you you have to want to go there and you think right I've I wanted to come here I'm going to invest in this. So you do, you know, emotionally. Whereas I, I you know I think half the people oh, it's 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 you know it's, it's the first stop on a night out for a lot. All right, uh just a, a couple more questions to go unless anyone has got anything to add to that. The silence tells me everything I need to know, so we'll go on to the next question. Is there anybody still there? <laughs> Turned anybody off? I mean, is anybody still going to be listening to it after this? If, if, Mind if, you, misery loves company, so probably. Yeah. Uh, this one comes from this one comes from a Ginler on the cage. Uh, it is is it acceptable for an owner to so infrequently watch his team play or hide so much in the background like Neil Black does? This to me suggests it is Gary Moran calling the shots because Mr Black can only know what he is told, which cannot be healthy. Contrast that to Tony Smith at Sheffield, who seems to be a very hands-on over, uh, owner. Now, to be fair, Neil Black lives in London. Tony Smith lives in Sheffield. So... Tony Smith, and I know Sean Smith's son is, is incredibly hands-on at Sheffield, so that's going to be a lot easier. It's not so easy for the likes of Neil Black because he, he lives 120 miles away. So Tina, I'm 18, lives in Kent, and he still comes to well, our game. Well, true, true. <laughs> Tina, well, I, I mean, I think you have to sort of add to that that he's got other business interests. I mean, even even take it outside of hockey, he's, he's got other things that he does. He's not he, he's not just the owner of, of the Nottingham Panthers and the Brayhead Clan. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm fairly certain he's got other bu- other business interests. So, I, whilst he seems to be a hockey fan, I don't think he's got time to be a diehard fan of the Nottingham Panthers, and that is the nature of a business. You know, you you if you own a business, you rely on your management to run the business for you. You know, if if you see a problem with it, you know, in, <laughs> and I'm not even you know I'm not I'm not talking about necessarily ice hockey now. I'm talking about just in business in general. If you see a problem, then you go and complain at your manager. Your manager then goes and and does whatever they need to do to fix it. So you know, I'll tell you they fixed it. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that, that's that's fair enough. But I mean, the, the the other thing is that both of both of Neil Black's sons are on social media, and I don't think they are completely obl- oblivious to what is being said. Uh, you know, a lot of people directly tweet them as a as a, a because they think that whatever they tweet to to both his sons will get back to the man himself. Maybe some of it does. We, we don't know. So. The, the, the nature the, the nature of business is that Neil Black is going to rely on Gary Moran to run the Panthers, and in terms of in, t- in terms of, of the Nottingham Panthers being um, a, a company that is, is you know successful and solvent, it is. <laughs> yeah, we, we might not be getting the results on the ice, um, but but yeah, the, as far as Neil, Neil Black's concerned, it's it's fine. You know if 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 he's hearing grumblings from from fans, you, you always hear grumblings from fans. So you know he has to take that as a he has to take it very measuredly. Um, so if if he sees a problem, then I would imagine he'll go in, in and fix it. But at, at his sort of level, I, I I don't think he sees anything wrong. Okay. Uh, anybody got any other opinions on that? Um, well, the only thing I think it kind of links back to the a view for a bridge question as well is where would the pressure come from for the management? Mm. Mm. And that that's that's sort of how I see it. Who who would be putting pressure on management other than as the fans? And so long as we keep turning <coughs> up, mm. where is the pressure? Mm. 
And I, I think that's the thing. Well, ever there's six thousand people in the building, most home games is is there really a problem in in their mm. eyes? Because there's still six thousand people turning up. Well, yeah, it's it's not Neil Black's problem. Mm. <laughs> that, that, I'm sure that, he's that very happy a, with that. <laughs> yeah, it, that, that's not his problem. It, you know, the, the the problem of of disgruntled fans is the problem. It, you know, it, it, that's to, that's for the team and the coach, and to a certain extent, maybe the, maybe the general manager and and the off ice team. But you know, worry, worrying about if fans are happy or not, that's not Neil Black's job. Fair enough. One final question. Uh, mm. <laughs> we can we, we can all have a go at this, and it comes from Ray Adams. He says, "Can Panthers do a cup only season ticket next season?" It seems that's the only time they turn up. <laughs> Andy. <laughs> um, well, while it's actually rather tongue in cheek, I imagine, um, in the sort of a way it's written, I actually think it's not a bad idea, in the sense that. You know, you could offer discounted rates. It would perhaps guarantee that you'd get people in for, say, the games that aren't Sheffield, that always, ne- they're the ones that never end up on the season ticket. And I suppose the difficulty is when we when we have the double up games, which again is another argument because there shouldn't be any, in my opinion. Not, um, not but you, but you look at no. things like. Um, the cricket is is a case in point. You can get a season ticket for the twenty twenty games mm. um, because they know that people want to go to all the twenty twenty games, so they can offer that kind of deal. And I, I I would hazard a guess that there'll be plenty of people that would be willing to buy a mini season ticket for the Challenge Cup round robin games. Mm. Obviously, I don't think you could do it for the whole of the Challenge Cup because yeah, do you no charge? Every, yeah, yeah. Time. Do you charge everyone for all the way up to the final, and then you don't make it? So, you know, you've overcharged people, or do you charge people for just the group stages? You make it to the final, and then you've been undercharged people. You know, it. it you can only do it for the for the round robin stage, for the group stages. But I, I you know, I I think it. Potentially, like I say, although the question was probably slightly tongue in cheek, I think potentially it's uh, it's a decent question and, and something that perhaps in the future you you might see not necessarily just us doing, but perhaps other teams might pick up on it. Uh, you know, just a bit of extra revenue and a bit more guarantee that people um, are going to come because they'd be buying the tickets up front. And with the Challenge Cup being sort of played early doors. I would hazard a guess that you're going to get a lot of people interested because it's going to be their first time, first chances to see the team at one, you know, when we're all full of uh, hope and excitement. Anything anyone wants to add? Yeah, uh, well, I, not... I, I, sorry, sorry, go on, Paul. No, I was just going to say not, not to that, no. No, well, I, I, I think I've mentioned this in a previous podcast, but just just as a an addition to to what Andy's saying, and yeah, I, I I appreciate that the question is is tongue in cheek. Um, we do seem to be very good at winning the cup, but yeah, first of all, we need to stop doing double ups. It's ridiculous. We're the only team that's done it this year, as far as I'm aware. So that that's got to stop. We either take it seriously or we don't bother. That that just it, it just infuriates me every year. But if we are going to take it seriously. I, I would definitely be a fan of having like a bolt on for my season ticket for the round robin games, so that I so that I know that I've paid for all the games up front. You know, I, I get my season ticket and I've already got chal- the, the Challenge Cup games, and I don't have to pay any extra for them at the beginning. You know, after the season because it's blooming hard work when you've bought your season ticket and then for the first couple of months of the year you've you've got extra games to go and buy, and then you know the the, the club. <laughs> the club expects that people, are, you know, that fans are going to travel to away games as well. It's it financially, it, it can be hard work being a Panthers fan, <laughs> um, especially at the, at the beginning of the season. And it's just money, 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 and it just it just feeds more fuel to the fire that we're just a cash cow. So it, that's one way you can kind of make it easier. Um, you how know, how I'm, many I'm, Challenge I'm, Cup games have you missed at home, though? How many have I missed this season? I don't think I've missed any. Precisely. I've yeah. missed. Well, yeah, there is that. Yeah. yeah, you've got a good, ex- well, you've got not, a good I'm excuse, gonna... Andy, to be fair. No, but I, I, I haven't, though. I mean, the reasons why I've... Yeah, yeah. 
why I have missed them. I mean, I didn't go on Friday because we were awful the, the game before, and I just thought I, I don't want to pay to see that. If I if I was offered a, a Challenge Cup season ticket in the summer, I'd have been there on Friday because I'd have already bought it. Mm. Yeah. The, the only, yeah, the only reason I was there on Friday is because we'd signed Kudrok and I thought, yeah, I'll go and have a look at him and I'm not going to be in a dense next weekend, so it would be a fortnight without hockey. If if neither of those had been the case, if we'd not signed anybody and we got a game next weekend, they could have they they, they wouldn't have had my eighteen quid or however, however much it was. Yeah, I mean I mean the thing is, um just just to, I mean just to ask you, it's not it's not necessary it's not even about it's not even a, I take just taking the money out of it. Oh, I don't know because that's, that's not what it. It's 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 just a nice thing it's that they could do for us. It's just it's just something that they could say. You know, like for me, it'd be easier if I just paid it all at once. You know, and and mm. you know, yeah, I could just say, well, yeah, I, you know, and, and I, it's just a nice thing that the, the the Panthers or the arena or you know whoever it is that's controlling all this could say, you know, ju- just so you don't have to be you know paying for more games after you've shelled out few hundred quid for your season ticket you, you can pay it all at once or you know and i know they do the direct debit as well you can you can pay it off monthly so if you've if you factor the challenge the, the price of the challenge cup games into that you already know it's coming hmm. okay. well, I'd, I'd ask why the challenge cup group games aren't on the soup um season ticket anyway we know the group games are going to happen so why aren't they included yeah yeah. Well, that's my that, that's my point. I mean, well, just, it's something along those lines. Just reprice it yeah. for, for the Challenge Cup games. I mean, what's so hard about that? Mm. We know mm-hmm. it's going to be two because the mm. other two will be doubled up. But there you go. Well, they're, they're, they're going to know how many games there are. So, yeah, just charge the correct amount mm. rather than messing us about. And you know, there's the other problem that you buy your tickets, you, you add them to the season ticket. You turn up at the gate to get in, and it's not registered that you've bought them. Mm. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's another problem. But <laughs> for another time, I think I think yes. we, we've gone on yep. far too long. I, um, I, I want to say a massive, massive thank you to everyone who took the time to send, send questions in. Once again, apologise if we if we didn't uh, read yours out. But like I say, we got so many it, it was very very difficult I think you should thank the people who are still with us yeah <laughs> well I, I, obviously <laughs> thank you very much for, for listening I can imagine it's not been are we, an are we easy going back listen. to live next week we're, well we're going back to live on Thursday I mean obviously uh, yeah. because this is recorded we will not be doing um, uh, the live show normal live shows on Monday and Wednesday unless anything drastic happens during the week so we will be back live on Thursday night uh, which we will be looking ahead to the Continental Cup this weekend can I just very quickly answer one question that we that hasn't been asked yeah sure um, Tim Alton asked if we'd put the next mortgage, our next mortgage payments on um, whether we'll finish in the top half. I've just counted the money in my pocket, and I've got three pounds fifty. I wouldn't put that on it. <laughs> Fair enough. There you go. So once again, thank you to you for listening, and many, many thanks to Paul Barm. Thank you very much. Thank you for staying with us. Uh, T the Taylor, TTFN, and Andy Haywood. No worries at all. See you soon. Um, so we will be back again live 8.45pm on Thursday evening. Thank you very much and we will see you then. She got the money.